In this video, I'm going to share some tips on how to get into mountaineering. One of my viewers and hopefully subscribers asked this question and I'm bringing this question to this person and to you in general. Getting into mountaineering always looks like this majorly complex thing. You've got all this gear, all these things, ice axes, all this craziness. What do you really need? I mean, you look up that gear and it's crazy expensive, right? Hang on. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to get into it, the bare minimums you're going to need, and what can take you farther. Plus, at the end of the video, two critical things for you that you want to read, and also the key to bringing you home alive. So let me give the viewer credit here. Uh, this person's name is Cody. I believe it's Naysbit. Please forgive me if I pronounced your last name incorrectly, but uh, Cody Naysbit, here's the question. I haven't watched all your videos yet, so perhaps there is a video that's been already made, but I'm getting interest in mountaineering and alpine climbing and want to know how to get started. That's this video. I have been thinking about getting a membership at a local rock climbing gym and learning about harnesses, ropes, and the basics. Outside of that, should I just head outside and start up the mountains close to me on the weekends? Well, I have a background in hunting and outdoors a lot, but not climbing big peaks. So Cody and the rest of the viewers out here, this is the list of the things that you're going to want as a bare minimum to say that you're mountaineering. The very first thing of everything you need to get mountaineering is the ice axe. The ice axe is the number one. You could skip the, well, you, you could skip everything, even the ice axe, but it's a great way to die. The ice axe is the thing that will help you stop and arrest yourself if you start falling. You can skip on crampons, everything else, but the ice axe is the key. Um, I've got multiple ice axes, got my Venom here. I've got my Black Diamond Raven Pro. I've got my Camp Corsica. This guy is totally awesome. If you want an ultralight ice axe, that Camp Corsica is pretty sweet. The Venom is a little more heavy or heavier. My uh, Raven is pretty old. I've had this thing 20 years. On the ice axe, get the lightest one you can get and spend some money. Do not go cheap, but warning, the Camp Ice Axe is super good, but only the, let's see, what does it say on here? The Corsa Nanotech. The regular Camp Ice Axe cannot handle hitting hard ice. It is not designed for it. It has to have the extra bimetal tip there. So critical, critical thing. Ice Axe, they're anywhere from 80 to $160, but that Camp Corsa, man, because it's so light, it's nothing to put it in the pack and haul with it. The next thing, as you can see, brain bucket. You want a helmet because if you stumble and fall, maybe a little bit of avalanche, and you start getting crumbled, your dome, your melon, is a critical thing to bring you home. In military parlance, I believe you call it cover. This helmet is inexpensive. There are two classic types of helmet, the multi-impact style and the more bike helmet. The bike helmet, style is super nice but once you conk it once you're actually supposed to replace it bonus they're extra light compared to these sort of guys downside once you crack it once i've whacked my head a lot no big deal uh yeah great next thing you're going to want are some sort of climbing boots whether you have insulated boots non-insulated boots double mountaineering boots or cubes, kind of the hybrid, semi-warm weather boots, you're going to need some mountaineering boots. Now, I've had friends that were climbing in the east and they went to a store, I don't know what store it is, and they bought some boots like, oh yeah, yeah, those would be great for crampons. We went climbing, the guide took the boots and flexed them totally up, failed. You need a stiff boot. These are not as stiff as they should be, but they will work because the next thing you need are crampons. You gotta get yourself some crampons that work with your boots. There are two types of crampons. Well, there's a dozen types of crampons, but the first style is the plastic bale on the front. These plastic bales are more common than the metal hook-on style bale because they're more versatile. The metal style, where it hooks onto a mountaineering boot because it's got what's called a toe bale catch or a toe welt here where you can clamp on your crampons. I love these because they're extra light and they will not fall off. The plastic bale here could slip off. I have seen it happen. Bonus to this, it's more versatile. 
Yes, I've got uh, duct tape on there and there's a reason for that. But crampons that match your boots, super, super critical. That will take you a long, long way into getting where you want to go. And a couple more things you need to get. Headlamp. Start out climbing on a mountain or a hill or whatever, a thousand feet or 340 meters is all you need for mountain, right? Make sure you have a headlamp. Get yourself a headlamp. Get yourself a backup headlamp because when you get stuck in the outdoors and it's dark and you're wandering around at night, you're gonna really wish you had a headlamp because your phone ain't gonna cut it when it's super cold. So headlamp is a big, big deal. And also, you want to get yourself a knife. Whether it's, you know, the super light uh, Spyderco, that super light Spyderco is super nice. Or you get yourself, uh, what do we have here? Kershaw, yeah, Kershaw. You do not have to spend a lot of money. Like I've got my ZT Zero Tolerance here. Crazy expensive. Or I've got my Benchmade, crazy expensive again. Or even, Depending on where you are, classic switchblade, totally effective, whatever you might need. You do not need an expensive knife like all these knives, but boy, it's super nice to have one. So that gets you into the basics of mountaineering. Literally, that's all you need. But if you want to kick it to where you're going to go climbing with people and hey, I'm a little more serious, you're going to need to get yourself a climbing harness that will fit over your mountaineering clothes. My climbing harness, here, love this thing, it's covered in chalk dust. But yeah, get a climbing harness, that will make a big, big difference. Make sure when you're starting out that you're climbing on slopes that are not steep. If you're climbing on anything that's 25 degrees and steeper, and uh, you are at the risk of avalanche and dying. Please don't die. I never want to hear you dying or reading tragedies ever again. Even though the standard slope says 30 degrees, believe me, just take your phone, turn on the measure app, do the tilty job, figure out how steep it is. If it's above 25 degrees, back off because there is a potential for avalanche. If you want to get into it more, dun, 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 we've got more for you and stay tuned to the end of the video. Two critical things here. If you want to get more serious into it, well, you really should have, uh, I guess I should take this out of the bag here because that's where my go kit is. You want a compass. You want a lighter, hopefully a lighter that works. Yeah, a lighter that works, that's a big deal. Cause you might need to start fire. You need a, I'd still recommend this, first aid kit, signal mirror, all sorts of stuff. That'll get you going pretty well. Now, one of the key things also in mountaineering is the end of the video, I will tell you. But when you're going in mountaineering and you're going to be climbing with people, you're probably going to want some sort of GPS so you can mark your tracks, find your way back, because it, when it lights out, one of my climbing partners got lost on Shasta, got frostbite, he made it home, but oh boy, his wife was hot. Yeah, not good there. And also, Avalanche Beacon, I've got my Black Diamond Peeps here. Super awesome, <laughs> love that. By the way, this design has apparently been supplanted by a new design. Uh, so by the way, uh, just check that out. Never buy a used avalanche transceiver. Very bad idea. And then also, you're going to want to get yourself a probe. So if something happens and you're climbing and your team falls and you get an avalanche, the probe's gonna help you out there. Plus, a shovel. Do not have a plastic shovel because when an avalanche happens, you will not be able to dig into that snow. It just doesn't happen. If you're climbing with partners that have a plastic shovel and there's even mild potential of avalanche, you need to get yourself some new climbing partners. Huge, huge thing. There you go. And you, know, you can get stoves and all sorts of craziness. Uh, you're gonna have to get you know, crampons. You're gonna need to get yourself a rope if you're gonna really spiral out. Oh yeah, climbing rope baby. So. Even though I've listed the key things of ice axe, helmet, boots, crampons, and a helmet, uh, trekking poles are super helpful to get you up to the long approaches to wherever you're going, and get yourself some gaiters to keep the snow out of your boots. But here we go, the two things that you've been waiting for the end of the video, well actually three things. 
Get yourself the Boy Scout, or I guess the Scouting Now field book. Read the mountaineering thing. This book is totally awesome. It is loaded with outdoor wisdom that you cannot get anywhere else, believe me. Links below to all the products I'm telling you about in this video. And also get yourself a copy of Mountaineering the Freedom of the Hills. This is the seminal guide to learning everything you ever wanted to know academically about mountaineering and climbing. That is totally awesome. I think it's, uh, I've got edition seven, edition eight's out, you know, totally key. But the number one thing that you've waited for the end of the video is, no matter what you're doing, climbing helmets, everything, tell someone responsible who cares about you where you're going and when to expect you back. Because if something happens and no one knows where you're lost, you're gonna have to do the Aaron Ralston thing of, I gotta cut my hand off with a dull Swiss Army knife. You do not want to do that. And also, part of that is when you're telling somebody where you're going, when to expect you back, what your plan is, do not deviate from your plan unless it's an emergency because you're going along and I've done this, I'm like, wow, there's a beautiful lake over there. Great, don't do it. Because unless you're with a team and you have a way to communicate and something goes wrong, especially if you do a lot of solo like me and I deviate from my plan, no one is going to be able to find my carcass. And I don't want that, happen, that to happen to you. So if you think, oh, you know, I want to go a different route, but I told somebody I was going on the standard right, say, uh, route, say climbing Mount Hood, but I'm going to completely deviate. You are taking your life into your own hands. Just say, you know what? This route was tougher than I realized. I should back off. I've descended more mountains. It's like depressing. I mean, it, it took me two or three times to climb literally uh, Mount Whitney because I was trying in the winter. Just, you know, endless on this, no matter what. The most important thing is not the summit, but it's you coming home to your family, your dog, your pet, your gopher, your gerbil, whatever. That, that is the most critical thing. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links below to all my books to teach you about all these different things and give you an idea of what it's like to experience it. Antarctic Tears, Adventure Expedition 1. Lost at Windy Corner, How to Climb Denali is in there, right folks? And the most crucial lots to know, how to keep your feet warm in the cold, the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, my Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, and also my shows Antarctica and World Beyond. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more information like this. Thank you for watching, and be safe out there.